Good afternoon, everyone. Just waiting for the slides to come up. My name is John Garretts. I'm uh, co-founder and CEO of Oaken Innovations, uh, formerly Project Oaken. And uh, I, I just want to start off by saying how excited, and I think I speak for the rest of our team when I say how excited we are to be here in Cancun at DevCon 3 on this stage speaking to you. Uh, and when I say you, I mean the community that we've all been a part of uh, for, for a number of years now. And um, we're, we're really excited uh, uh, to tell you kind of the story of Oaken is what I'm going to start with over the last year. Uh, and then I'm going to hand it over to Lex. He's going to take you through a few of the technologies that we've been building out. And then we're going to wrap it up with a video. So again, my name is John Garrett. Uh, I've been in the space since about uh, 2014, very early on in Ethereum years. Uh, one of the first projects I worked on, Airlock, was on Proof of Concept 3. Um, so very, very early years. Uh, from there, I was able to uh, secure a developer's grant, a dev grant from the Ethereum Foundation for Eth Embedded, which was essentially taking the Ethereum client and porting it to ARM-based uh, uh, resource-constrained devices. And that uh, allowed me to start to build relationships in the community. And many of those relationships are now my co-founders uh, uh, with Oaken Innovations. This is our team. We have a fantastic team. Uh, I'm so proud of what we've been able to do in a very short amount of time. Uh, many of you are familiar with Hudson Jameson, but we also have Laney Fisher, James Johnson, uh, Lex, and Daniel is uh, the most recent addition. Um, shout out to Ethlance. Uh, uh, Daniel was a recent hire. We went through the process of Ethlance, and so shout out to someone else in the community that we've used their tools uh, and has worked out very well for us. So this is kind of the story of Oaken. Uh, about a year ago today, you know, the majority of us knew each other, but we hadn't really worked together. And so we got together about this time last year to enter into a couple of hackathons. Uh, the, the kind of result of that was a judge's win with a, a hack ether camp. Um, and then from there, we built on to a first place finish in the a Dubai virtual blockchain gov hack. Uh, and first place was $100,000 all expenses paid trip to Dubai. And our project there was a proof of concept that we referred to as Tesla and Tollbooth. And what we were able to do is I install an Ethereum client in a Tesla and install an Ethereum client in a mock Tollbooth to demonstrate the true machine-to-machine uh, uh, -machine transactions uh, with no uh, human involvement. That game does some traction uh, from uh, one of our partners initially, uh, Toyota Research Institute, uh, which we uh, moved on to build out a proof of, another proof of concept for peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. And uh, that was something that we uh, debuted in uh, May at Consensus 2017. And essentially what we were able to do is uh, install an Ethereum client in a car, uh, connect that to a FOB and uh, through a series of smart con escrow smart contracts, uh, rent out or short-term lease that vehicle. And this is a, a, all these proof of concepts that I'm speaking to are, are functional proof of concepts. These are things that we have built out that are up and running, um, you know, not in a production environment, but up and running nonetheless. Uh, from there, we've uh, been able to be involved in a, a number of other uh, uh, projects, I guess, uh, MIT Media Lab. We're really working with Toyota Research Institute to start to facilitate some kind of an open blockchain mobility ecosystem. And so we, uh, you know, in the past we've invited other automotive manufacturers to come to the table and we've been uh, at least successful in starting that conversation. Uh, in, uh, we're based out of Dallas, Texas, so we have a, a strong relationship with a lot of the universities in that area as well. Um, we're involved in an open data initiative with the Texas Department of Transportation, or TXDOT, uh, and we're also talking to a few toll road authorities, um, um, both in the U.S. and abroad. We're a member of the Trusted IoT Alliance. Uh, this is a, we're very excited to be a part of this group. Uh, there's a lot of active members in the Trusted IoT Alliance. Um, we're still kind of a, a small group, but growing fast. And uh, ourselves, we've been able to uh, contribute MQTTT, which Lex will talk about uh, in a little more detail shortly. Um, and if, you, if you're out there and you're working on IoT and blockchain and you're interested in becoming a member, please go to trusted-iot.org trusted and uh, check it out, sign up, and uh, we'd love to have you on board and, and kind of learn more about your technologies. So it's now my pleasure to introduce Lex uh, Shuang Liang. Uh, Lex is our CTO, and uh, he has some prior experience. Lex and I met in Guelph, Ontario, Canada, which is, is uh, close to my hometown. And um, you know we, uh, we kept in touch after that initial uh, connection. Lex did some IoT uh, internship work for Aris Industries, which is now Monax, uh, and joined the team uh, just prior to the Dubai event. So please give Lex a round of applause. Thanks, John. 
So uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. So uh, I'm Shuang, uh, or in Chinese, Liang Shuang. Uh, you can call me Lex. And uh, I got my master's degree in co uh, computer science at Temple Uni University in Philadelphia. So I'm glad to be here to introduce some of the technologies that we are working on recently. So yeah, the first one I want to introduce is the um, MQTT Trusted. And uh, uh, the second one is the micro dap. And uh, also we have a hardware security model we are working actively, actively, actively with to build some uh, secure hardware for the IoT platform. Yeah, MQTT Trusted is a trusted, trusted version of MQTT. So it's based on the MQTT library and the Ethereum library. MQTT is a very lightweight uh, PubSub-based machine-to-machine communication protocol. It's very popular for uh, uh, IoT uh, applications. And it's designed for uh, very uh, low bandwidth communication for some sensors or telemetry devices. And the feature we want to uh, uh, bring in to this machine-to-machine -machine communication is from Ethereum global, uh, likely un uh, unlimited identity system, and also it's trust trusted without the centralized control. And uh, we can use the built-in ECDSA algorithm to uh, get the uh, signature of the messages and uh, embed the signature to send to send to the receiver. So here is the flow. Uh, from the sender side, it, it uh, put a plain message and the MQTT library will build some uh, um, a packet like this. It has a from and to field, which is based on the Ethereum address. And uh, the, we, can, we put the timestamp as the proof of date uh, to see, um, to put, put some uh, constraint of the uh, operation of the message. Also, the date, date load and the sequence number. And after that, we'll use uh, either the private key of the Ethereum or hardware security model to send the message and put the signature into that message. And at the receiver side, it first uh, can recover the address of the sender uh, based on some Web3 web library or Ethereum uh, library. And uh, it can check check the permission of the sender uh, from the smart contract. Uh, also, uh, we can do proof of uh, provenance of the data or access control based on the identity of the sender. So there are some issues we want to solve on the, uh, from this library is uh, inter interoperability. There are some problems here. It, the first one is uh, signature can be messed up if uh, uh, the sender and the receiver use different libraries to send and recover the message. And the second issue is um, this part of the properties of it are not standard yet. So we want to probably standardize this um, machine-to-machine -machine communication scheme. So uh, it will be easier for your uh, fridge to talk with uh, microwave or some uh, talk with your car. So they are all compatible with each other. So because of these issues, we want to collaborate with the community with the trusted LT Alliance to build some standard for the machine-to-machine -machine communication also uh, build some uh, semantic uh, on top of the Ethereum blockchain and uh, this protocol. So the next one we want to introduce is the micro dApp. So you can see from name is small version of the decentralized application. Uh, we use um, Raspberry Pi for our hardware platform, but we can also um, port our uh, stack to other embedded system like uh, BeagleBone and other uh, uh, embedded device. So, sorry. We use Ethereum Light client for the smart contract and uh, IPFS for uh, the data storage and uh, the MQTT library to support machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication. So this is an example of the architecture we are working on 
from the top layer is a decentralized application for design for IoT uh, app, uh, use case. And uh, we have uh, three components. Uh, it's the, the first one is decentralized data storage uh, API and uh, the trusted machine to machine communication interface to the, to the application and uh, also the smart contract. So in the mi middle layer, we have IPFS, but uh, you can actually uh, plug in other uh, decentralized storage uh, libraries like the Swarm and uh, the MQTTT, uh, the Ethereum blockchain. Actually, uh, we, we are trying to build like um, uh, to uh, support other blockchain like Hyperledger, Quorum. And uh, under the lowest layer uh, is the hub hardware ab abstraction layer. We can support uh, center data and hardware secure uh, model as a uh, um, IoT wallet. And uh, here is the, an example of the uh, microdap service to interact with the user uh, using the mobile app or web app. So. Here, the boss has uh, the has access to the Ethereum blockchain and uh, IPFS for data storage, but uh, it's not like pure centralized uh, infrastructure. We still need some um, uh, like server to offload the computing uh, task from the embedded device to the servers. Here we can we use MQTT broker on the server side. Uh, also, we need some um, server to um, upload the like uh, Ethereum gateway and the IPFS gateway uh, to support uh, the contain the device. So here is a uh, real world example we build with Toyota for the uh, car sharing decentralized car sharing application. So you can see it's not like a traditional server-based uh, design, design paradigm. It's really like peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, design paradigm. All of the cars uh, have our micro uh, services running, and uh, they can communicate uh, with each other through the MQTT machine-to-machine -machine communication and uh, uh, access to the smart contract. So we, we have the video to show the, the real app and uh, the user experience later on. I'll go quick, very quickly for the hardware secure model. Is, uh, we build this uh, hardware secure model with some uh, requirements we want to uh, for the IoT and blockchain application. First one is we, we want temper proof uh, to uh, prevent the attacker uh, like physically attack the device. And uh, we want uh, very secure key storage and uh, revoke the key when we detect some uh, uh, attack uh, intention. Also, we want it to be blockchain compatible, like we can uh, send using the hardware security model and uh, using uh, and this signature compatible with uh, Web3 library or other uh, Ethereum libraries. So here is our current uh, com uh, company accomplishments for the hardware security model. We can send offline transactions, and uh, we can send personal personalized transactions. Also, we have this Node.js library to uh, access the functions in the hardware security model. So there are still ongoing work we uh, actively uh, develop. Uh, like here, we want uh, we are developing the physical temper detection with uh, uh, collaboration with some uh, hardware companies, and uh, we uh, are building this secure case story based on the secure elements. Yeah, uh, these all are like uh, ongoing projects we are actively working on, and uh, we are like communi community driven and uh, like to talk with uh, developers. Uh, if you have questions. You can go to this website and stay tuned. We may uh, have more release uh, like the MQTT to the community. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So, as Lex alluded to, we've been uh, in as much work as Lex has done on, on our on our back end systems. Uh, we've really been focused from the get go on the front end and uh, uh, really making sure that there's a good user experience. Uh, in fact, some of this was born out of necessity for us to keep that user experience uh, 
um, at a level that we're comfortable with. And so we're just going to play a quick video for you now. Uh, this was first launched at uh, Money 2020 last week in conjunction with Toyota Research Institute and uh, kind of gives you the, the, our, our vision of the uh, 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 mobility future. Hello from Oaken Innovations. We're excited to show you what we've been working on with Toyota Research Institute. Earlier this year, we debuted our proof of concept, blockchain-enabled peer-to-peer car lease application at Consensus in New York. This application allowed consumers to lease a vehicle from a car owner using a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain, file storage on IPFS, and a mobile application to lease and control access to the vehicle. Prior to our car lease model, we developed a blockchain-powered automated toll road system with connected cars. This project won us the top honors among the entire world at the UAE International Blockchain Hackathon. These applications allow for instantaneous remittance between the transacting parties. They do this without the need for payment processors by using logic coded to a smart contract. The hyper-secure blockchain-based IoT controls add a level of security not currently available on the consumer market all while reducing or eliminating the need for server infrastructure. Oaken Innovations wants to give you a glimpse into the mobility future we envision. We use the blockchain for application logic and data storage, replacing traditional server infrastructure. Here we use the blockchain to store vehicle identity along with GPS. Now we add road and mapping data and allow trusted entities to update this decentralized data layer. Smart road sensors can also feed this database. This allows for a complete view of all vehicles and infrastructure with current construction and traffic conditions while allowing third-party applications to be built on top of this data. Let's amend that vehicle data for lease or ride-sharing services. This now allows consumer mobile apps for ride-sharing or leasing using this blockchain services layer. In a ride-share or lease transaction, things get very interesting. Using blockchain technology, instant value transfer and microtransactions are now possible. Within one smart contract transaction is instant remittance to several parties including the vehicle owner and driver, insurance provider, toll road authority, and road tax entity. Why is this valuable? The automobile owner and driver receive guaranteed and instantaneous payment of funds. Microinsurance policies for each ride or lease transaction can be paid to an escrow contract, then remitted to the insurance provider once the ride is complete, with the balance of that escrow going to the rider or lessee. We can use an escrow contract for autonomous toll payments and even eliminate toll gates from the toll road infrastructure as we can prove the location of the vehicle using GPS. We can even have smart toll road infrastructure where roads are only charged during peak hours. As consumer behavior moves away from purchasing fuel and favoring pay per ride mobility over vehicle ownership, road and infrastructure authorities will face a shortfall of tax revenue that currently funds the construction and maintenance of roads. Included in the mobility transaction is a usage-based tax to replace this lost revenue. Even short trips where a fraction of a penny is needed for taxation. All of these parties receive the benefits of instantaneous remittance, all included in a single transaction user experience, all without the need for payment processing intermediaries. Let's go further. With this blockchain platform in an autonomous driving world, we get to go beyond rider mobility into other applications. Solar energy production is highest when the sun is shining the most. That's typically in the middle of the day. Energy demand typically spikes in the morning and then again in the evening, time that solar energy production is weakest. During low mobility demand times, automated vehicles can store solar energy during peak production times, then deliver that energy when and where it is needed. Also, since we have the automobiles equipped with 5G connectivity, we can provide a self-healing mesh network across large areas, as well as a partitioned consumer Wi-Fi service, all while the vehicles receive microtransaction reimbursements for sharing their internet connection. Thank you for your time, and we hope you enjoyed our version of the blockchain-powered vehicle future. For more information, please visit us at oakeninnovations.com and blockchain-mobility.org.